Billy Khan, the Emperor's right hand man as he is nicknamed, made his debut pretty early in the King of Fighters series as a member of the rivals team. Unlike other characters and non-canon entries aside, Billy never sticks with the same teammates. Each time he's present in a game, he's either aligned with new fighters or just joining the competition on his own. But one thing stays always unchanged, his loyalty to his boss, Geese Howard. The first time we saw Billy, he was the sub-boss of the original Fatal Fury, and since then, he became a recurring character in both series. Yet despite that, Billy remains a relatively mysterious character who many don't know that much about, and that is exactly what we are going to rectify in this video. As always, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified with every new video posted. Billy Khan was born in London. As far as he could remember, he'd always been an orphan. Unlike many other characters of the series, he had a rough and difficult childhood. He had to take care not just of himself, but also of his younger sister, Lily, the only family member he had left. To provide for both of them, Billy usually had to resort to stealing food. One day, he was spotted by none other than the infamous crime lord, Geese Howard, while he was in a business trip in Europe. Geese took pity on the young orphan. He himself didn't have the best childhood either, and had to grow up in similar circumstances than Billy's. In one of the rarest humane actions in his life, Geese decided to take the two orphans under his wing and shelter them, an action that gained him Billy's infinite gratitude and unconditional loyalty to this day. Geese was more than a boss for Billy, he was the father that he never had. After seeing his incredible skills in fighting with a bow staff, Geese made Billy his personal bodyguard and in no time he became to be known as the Emperor's right hand man. Billy assisted his boss in his conquest of South Town, carrying out his orders and following him like his shadow. When Geese started organizing the King of Fighters tournaments for the sake of finding and recruiting strong fighters, Billy was tasked to enter the competitions and defeat anybody who made it to the finals. For years, he remained the undefeated champion of Gis Howard until the 99 edition of the tourney that saw the participation of unusual fighters. The Lone Wolves, Terry, Andy and Joe entered the tournament and caused havoc among its participants, but it was Terry Bogard who made it to the finals and faced Billy. The fight was brutal and each man gave it his best. Billy had the support of Geese's men who didn't hesitate to help him by providing a new staff to him whenever he lost his own under Terry's relentless attacks. But at the end, the undefeated champion was at last vanquished. Terry didn't stop at this victory and beat the big boss himself shortly after that. The humiliation that Billy felt was unbearable. He swore to get his revenge against Terry someday. With the presumed death of Geese, Billy went back to London. When Wolfgang Krauser announced the organizing of his own version of KOF, Billy joined his gang as one of his three servants that were charged to beat the tourney participants. Despite the appearances, the truth was, Billy was actually carrying out a mission from Geese. Krauser had always been in a competition against his half-brother over the rule of the criminal world. When he heard that Geese was defeated, Krauser used this chance to defame him even more. He recruited a man that looked like his brother and sent him to participate to the competition. Geese learned about that and ordered Billy to find and eliminate this imposter, and that's exactly what Billy did. He found the fake Geese during the competition and beat him to a pulp before returning to his real boss. He found his next mission waiting for him upon his arrival. Geese learned that the three ancient scrolls had the power to grant its owner immortality. He already possessed one of them and knew that his old master, Tang Furu, had one as well. He sent Billy to take it from him, which he did. How he managed to do that remains unknown though. 
these lure the possessor of the third scroll out of their hideout by spreading the info that the scrolls of immortality were in South Town. After learning that the Jin brothers were the owners of the last precious artifact, he sent Billy to secretly steal it from them while everybody else were fighting each other in search of the said scrolls. Billy was surprised by Geese's order to dispose of the scrolls after spending all this time and effort in their search, but it turned out to be his boss's intention from the start. These scrolls were just too powerful and preserving them had the risk of seeing them falling in the hands of his enemies, and so Billy burned them as his boss commanded. Shortly after, he was given the last order from Geese. Billy was to participate to the latest K-Wave tournament in order to get revenge against Terry and his friends. He fought well for a while, but just like in the past tourney, he lost again against Terry. The competition ended with the death of Geese, but Billy's story was not over yet. Not too long after these events, a new criminal called White rose to take Geese's place as the Emperor of South Town. Billy was the first victim of his mind control technique, unwillingly becoming his bodyguard and lackey. Ironically, he was saved by none other than the Hungry Wolf, who defeated White with the help of his new friend Alfred. And since then, Billy totally disappeared and no one knew what became of him. According to the Maximum Impact series, he remains loyal to Geese even after his death and came to South Town when he heard that there were individuals claiming to be the new rulers of the city. For Billy, Geese will always be the Emperor of South Town and would do everything he could so that his name won't be forgotten. After blowing off some steam, Lily joined him seemingly worried about her brother. He decided to go home with her and stay out of trouble for her sake. After hearing that Terry took part to the 94 edition of K-Wave, Geese charged Billy to form a team and enter the following tournament, K-Wave 95. His mission was to punish the Bogart brothers during the tourney for defeating him in the past. Billy allied with the ninja Eiji Kisaragi, who also had a personal score to settle with Ryo Sakazaki. The third member of the team was not easy to convince however. Yori Yagami was a stubborn man and was not intimidated by Geese or his followers. But he did have his own rival, who was also participating to the tournament. At the end, he agreed to join Billy and Eiji, but only on the condition of being the leader of the team. Unfortunately for Billy, things did not go as planned. Not only he failed in getting his revenge against Terry, he was severely beaten with Eiji by their own teammate Iori. When Rogal used his Orochi powers at the end of K-Wave 95, it triggered the right of the blood within the red-headed fighter for a brief moment, but it was enough time to almost kill his two partners. And to make matters worse, Iori didn't see the need to explain his actions or even to apologize, resulting in him adding two new people to his long list of enemies. The next year, Geese decided to take matters into his own hands. He entered K-Wave 96 with his half-brother Krauser and the former boss of South Town, Mr. Big. Although he didn't forget his personal vendetta against Terry, his main objective was to learn more about this mysterious Orochi power. Geese schemes had nearly come to naught at the end of the tournament, as he was almost assassinated by one of Mr. Big's snipers if it wasn't for Billy who intercepted the bullet with his staff. Then boss and bodyguard decided to go hit the sauna after that mundane day of their life. Still intrigued about the Orochi power, Geese sent Billy to participate to KOF 97 in a team composed of the private detective Blue Mary and the former Yakuza Yamazaki. Geese wanted Billy to closely watch Iori as he saw how he went berserk and killed his teammates at the end of 96. He also had a hunch that there was a correlation between Yamazaki and Orochi. And as it turned out, he was right all along. Billy confirmed his suspicions during his report at the end of the tournament, before they were interrupted by Yamazaki, who stormed the office, demanding to be paid as agreed. Six years later, Billy had to team up with Yamazaki for the 2003 edition of K-Wave. 
His mission was to keep a close eye on Gato, the third member of his team. But as soon as the journey ended, Yamazaki attacked Billy, showing that there was still bad blood between the two. When K Wave 13 was announced, Billy decided to participate as a single entry with his own free will. He still didn't forget the humiliation of his defeat against Terry. He challenged the Hungry Wolf during the competition, but no one knows for sure how the fight ended. A short time before K Wave 14 was announced, Geese hired a new butler named Hein, who, despite his calm and polite demeanor, Billy was wary of and didn't fully trust him. Both men joined their boss and entered the tournament as Team South Town. Unlike the majority of the participants, Geese wasn't surprised by the apparition of Verse at the end of the tournament. In fact, he was anticipating its appearance as he explained to Billy and that it was all written in the secret scrolls. Their conversation was abruptly interrupted by an attack from Mr. Big's gang in an attempt to assassinate the crime lord again. Geese was safely escorted to his tower while Billy and Hein stopped to take care of the mobs. As one of the few characters who fight with weapons, Billy is the wielder of a three-sectional bow staff that he uses masterfully. His weapon gives him an advantageous long reach, making Billy one of the best mid-range characters with a fighting style that is perfect for those who like to poke their adversaries from a safe distance. Billy is also a flame user and can set his staff on fire. By spinning it, he can create a wheel of fire that burns anybody who gets too close to him or use it as a short-range projectile. He has the ability to create multiple copies of his staff and use them to attack. Of course, the damage is also multiplied. It's worth mentioning that he is very good at pole vaulting, a skill that is more useful in combat than one may think, as proved by our friend. Like many other characters, Billy is a musician and a member of a heavy metal band. Although he seems pretty short-tempered, he does have a soft side, which can be seen when he is with his sister or a close friend like Eiji. He used to hate Terry like none other, but as time goes on, it appears that Billy sees him more like a rival than an arch nemesis, at least according to the maximum impact continuity. Actually, both men had a lot of things in common. They were both orphans with a difficult childhood. Both have a younger sibling that they care about and were raised by a father figure who they greatly respect. And these two father figures also happen to be close friends and trained under the same master. While the tension between Billy and Terry seems to be softened lately, same thing cannot be said regarding Iori. Billy still holds an immense grudge against the red hair and doesn't seem ready to forget what he did to him in 95, a grudge that he shares with Eiji. However, there is another person who he hates above everyone else, Joe Higashi. The Muay Thai champion has great fondness for Lily and waits for any chance to get close to her despite Billy's over my dead body attitude. He worships Geese and his loyalty to him knows no bounds. Despite being one of the main villains of the series, Geese respects his subordinates and doesn't treat them like disposable trash, and so he trusts Billy and always shares his plans with him. Although he is not an evil character per se, the fact that Billy works for one of the most villainous figures of KOF and Fatal Fury unavoidably labels him as a villain as well. But why should he care about that? If you're still watching, then I assume you'll like the video, in which case don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and since you're most likely stuck at home in these beautiful times, why don't you go watch the many other videos I made about KOF characters. Special thanks to my patrons for their generous support, I hope you enjoyed this video, stay safe and thanks for watching.